What's going on, everybody? It's Justin Gaz of, uh, and this is Living and Moving to Seattle, Washington. This is the channel that gives you all the nitty gritty details of what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, play right here in the Emerald City. And today, we're going to talk about the top five most walkable Seattle neighborhoods. Okay, top five most walkable Seattle neighborhoods. If you're thinking about making a move out here and you're doing your keyboard research and you're trying to figure out, hey, I wanna live carless, I wanna be close to it all, shops, restaurants, bars, breweries, all that fun stuff, uh, close to work, close to transit, you really wanna be in these five neighborhoods that give you great access to all those things and transit. Seattle itself is kind of known as a, um, you know, a walkable city in general. It gets high marks from WalkScore. WalkScore.com is really the place that kind of outlines everything you need to know about what areas are walkable with a percentile, you know, one to 100, 100 being the most walkable and zero or to one being the absolute car dependent. And Seattle overall, the entire city overall gets a 74 walk score, which means it's really relatively walk, uh, walk friendly. So if you're thinking about making a move out to Seattle or you live in the area already, you're probably thinking about nature, mountains, surrounded by water. We've got the Puget Sound of, of Elliott Bay on one side, and then on the other side, we've got Lake Washington, even Big Green Lake, and we've got all this network of a lot of parks throughout the area, good access to Mount Rainier, good access to the Issaquah Alps, good access even up to the North Cascades. Within an hour, hour and a half, you can get pretty wild pretty fast. And so for those folks that are, you know, maybe just living in the city and they don't go out that much, maybe they're gonna use one of the rideshare programs and the, you know, to get out on trail, they're gonna be carless. The five neighborhoods that are the most walkable really are the, the you know, uh, not only are they the most walkable, but they also have the most things to do with easy access and great transit. And so being kind of a walker's paradise, that upper end of the 70 and 80 percentile uh, neighborhoods is really what you're probably looking for. Now, you're always going to have to balance that with, hey, is it too dense for me? Is there too much stuff going on? Is it too, you know, too much of that? So that's a battle that you'll have to kind of sort out when you get here. But let's get into the top five neighborhoods. We're going to do it just like David Letterman from the old days. We're going to do it like a top 10. We're going to start and we're going to work our way down. So the neighborhood that, that we're going to come in at number five is the Green Lake neighborhood. Now, if you look at a map and you bring it up, you got the big lake and then you've got kind of the Green Lake neighborhood uh, off to the east side of the lake and Finney, the Finney neighborhood off to the west side of the lake and underneath it, you'll have Tangletown and Meridian. Generally speaking, everybody's gonna talk about Meridian. Uh, they're either gonna say they're in Green Lake, depending on if they're north of 46th or south of 46th, or they're gonna say they're in Wallingford. Not many people around anymore truly know about the Meridian neighborhood. Uh, that's gonna be south of the lake. It, it is Meridian, but most people will say, hey, we're in Tangletown, we're in Green Lake. Uh, and then depending if you're a little further south, south of 46, they're gonna say they're in Wallingford, even though technically it's Meridian. And then you move up into a neighborhood called Tangletown, which is um, a neighborhood that in the 90s real estate agents came up with that name uh, to make it sound more enticing. It's really just part of Green Lake, but it's where a lot of the shops and restaurants and different things are south of the lake. And so that's got a, 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 a I think Elysian Brewing used to have a spot there. There's a bunch of little restaurants. All that stuff is right there. And then you work your way up a little bit further north into Green Lake proper, what everybody would call Green Lake. No questions asked, just east of the lake. And you'll have all kinds of different shops and restaurants, physical therapy offices, all kinds of stuff right there with really good transit to get to and from the lake and connect to other spots around the city. So the transit there, that neighborhood makes it really easy if you're gonna commute if you live in Ravenna, if you got to get over to Green Lake, you want to go to the lake in the summer. So what's cool about Green Lake too is, is that the lake itself has about a three mile trail, a uh, concrete trail around the lake. A lot of people go out there and they jog or they roller blade. They're just building new bike trails further out around the lake to get people on bicycles kind of away from that pedestrian walking area because because of the influx of people that go there all the time. And then there's all these great grassy fields, places to play baseball, volleyball, 
um, and all these other you know activities a lot of people in the summertime go down there uh, to enjoy the sunshine and the lake and there's even a kiddie splash pool right there that I've done a quick video uh, in the past about Green Lake where we were right next to the near the splash pool and some of those shops uh, shops and restaurants that are right there so Green Lake itself has a walk score of 78. So that's pretty great, that's pretty good right there. So if you choose to live in that area, you're really close to a lot of things with good access if you wanna get over uh, to Capitol Hills, really easy. A little, little tricky, but you can get to Finney Ridge and Ballard and all that stuff too pretty easily if you're going out on nights and weekends. Number four on the list is gonna be Queen Anne. I've talked a little bit about Queen Anne before. There's Queen Anne proper, and then there's Lower Queen Anne, known as Uptown. Lower Queen Anne has a lot of shops, restaurants, and easy, easy uh, access to transit. Because of its placement on the perched up on the hill, you've got great views of downtown Seattle, and depending on where you are, uh, you can even see out over to Green Lake and see uh, out into, it's a little bit harder to see Elliott Bay, but there's some houses that you can see Elliott Bay. But from Lower Queen Anne, where all the shops, restaurants, bars are, and um, even the, the Queen Anne Beer Hall, all that stuff, it's really easy. There's a big thoroughfare that runs down into downtown Seattle from there. Makes it really convenient and easy to take the bus to Seattle Center uh, or work your way into South Lake Union, and, and the transit there is really good. No light rail yet, but if you jump on a bus and hop down to Westlake, uh, Westlake Center, you can jump on the light rail there. Queen Anne itself comes in with a walk score of 79, uh, which is a little surprising that it's a better walk score than Green Lake. I think the transit at Green Lake's a little bit better than the transit at um, uh, in Queen Anne, but when you think about like where are you going, transit-wise, typically those folks are set up to commute to those hubs, to the South Lake Union and downtown and that sort of thing. And Green and the Queen, excuse me, and Queen Anne is set up better for that than than Green Lake. Number three on the list is Ballard. I've done a ton of videos of Ballard. Uh, it is, I think, my all-time favorite neighborhood in Seattle. It's got everything that you could wish, hope, and dream for in a neighborhood, shops, restaurants, bars, breweries. It's got a Scandinavian fishing heritage. Uh, if you look at the census, I've mentioned this in other videos, if you look at the census, it's no more Scandinavian than any other place. They just decided to run with it, right? The Fisherman Terminal is, is close by there in Inner Bay, and the, the cut starts there through Ballard with the Ballard Locks and the cut. So there is a large you know, fishing industry there, the Alaska fleet uh, at you know, Fisherman's Terminal and, and the, the service industry that services the fishing industry there in Ballard is still fairly prominent. Because of that zoning, Ballard's one of the only spots in Seattle that has that light industrial mixed with residential so close in where, and that's why we see a lot of breweries and distilleries and wineries kind of show up in Ballard. And so it makes that interesting mix. Ballard itself has a walk score of, make sure I get it right, 87, uh, which is far and above the last two, uh, right? We're working our way to the number one. Um, and what I really like about Ballard again is, is that, you know, the transit, no light rail yet, it's a couple years down the line, it's gonna get there. But right now there's, you know, uh, you can take 15th, through Interbay, down, take transit right into downtown Seattle. You can work your way over to 99 and get transit right into downtown really easy peasy. So the north to south is really good. When I lived in the heart of Ballard, I used to take the express bus to go see the Sounders play down in the stadiums. Really convenient, really easy. Um, I've even taken the bus down to the waterfront to go jump on the, uh, um, who is it? The uh, uh, what is it, the boat that goes to British Columbia? What is this thing called? Ferry. There's a ferry, but what's it called? It's called the, uh, um, it's like an express ferry. Um, ferry? Yeah, 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 but what it has a name, it's the, um, anyway, uh, maybe we'll find it in editing, we can post up who they are. Uh, but really fun, you just take the bus down, you jump on the foot ferry, you go to, you go to uh, Victoria, the Victoria Clipper, right? The Clipper. It says BC Ferries. <laughs> yeah, there's a Victoria Clipper. You go to Vic Victoria, and that's a fun town uh, to spend the spend the night in, and whatever, and hang out. So the Clipper, um, take the bus right there, easy peasy. So the, all three of those neighborhoods, really convenient, really easy to get around. Shops, restaurants, bars, especially in Ballard, you've got your breweries, uh, beer halls there in Queen Anne. The Queen Anne Beer Hall is a really cool place. Um, and the transit makes a lot of sense, right? So. So it's really, really easy to live without a car in those areas. 
Number two on the list. Number two is Fremont, which is right next door to Ballard. And I think when I talk to people, people reach out to me all the time because they're thinking about making a move and they want to better understand boots on the ground. They're relocating from Manhattan, from Louisville, from, um, well, I've, I've had people reach out from Florida, Texas, wherever you're coming from, just reach out, let's set up a time to chat. But what I hear all the time and, and what I try to explain all the time is that, you know, Ballard is truly made up of five neighborhoods. It's a very big land mass. And Fremont is the size of one of those neighborhoods. So Fremont in and of itself is much smaller than Ballard. And Fremont kind of has a core of uh, uh, living space to where they're, you know, where the townhouses are and the houses are. Beautifully, if you watch the Fremont video, you can, I, I walk up onto one of the, the hills above kind of where uh, the cut is and what, what we call like downtown Fremont or whatever. And you look out over so many things down, you can see the Space Needle. Fremont's a very cool, very diverse neighborhood for housing in different situations, but it is a smaller area to choose from. The benefit of Fremont is, is you're a little closer uh, to, you have the Fremont Bridge, which runs right over here, takes you right down Westlake. Um, or you can take Dexter if you're going to uh, South Lake Union, but you can go West Lake, South Lake Union, really convenient, easy on those buses. Uh, you could still get to a bus and go down to 15th, which is a little less convenient, but you can get down to 15th and run that all the way into downtown Seattle using 15th and Elliott, or you can hit 99, which I can see the 99 bridge right above us, you can take a bus, hit 99, right? So there's a lot of convenient and easy ways to get north and south. And that's, I always try to say, you know, it's easy to go north and south, it's a little harder to go east to west, but the way the streets are set up, you definitely can take the bus over to UW uh, and, and it makes it really convenient and easy to do that. So that's four out of five. Before we get to the number one neighborhood, if you've seen any of my videos, I bet you can guess which one it's gonna be. Um, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, feel free to reach out anytime. We're helping people make this move all the time. We wanna do a really good job for you. Uh, people that see our videos live in the area and are moving around the area now. And a lot of folks are coming from the East Coast, like I mentioned, Manhattan, Louisville, Florida, and Texas. And we see a lot of that influx too. So just feel free to reach out. All the contact info is down below and like I said, like, subscribe, tap the notification bell so that when we drop a new video, you get access to it right away and you can see it and see what we're talking about. We wanna put out good quality content to give you an idea of what it's like really boots on the ground. And so we try to put out a variety of videos for you. So I hope you get a kick out of them. All right, that said, let's get to the number one neighborhood. If you're playing along at home, I hope you wrote it down, what your best guess is, because you've been doing your homework and you figured it out and you're gonna get an A plus if you wrote down Capitol Hill. So Capitol Hill, yeah, fireworks, all this stuff. Good job, you figured it out. Capitol Hill is the most eccentric and eclectic mix of restaurants, shops. Um, it's one of the most dense areas outside of downtown uh, Seattle, Pioneer Square, but it's where most of the people live that, you know, it's easy, you just, Capitol Hill is a hill in Capitol Hill. So there is a strong, um, kind of uh, countercultural, you know, sex shops and uh, LGBTQ plus, and then the most wonderful coffee shops and restaurants and mixed in with gay bars and nightclubs and everything you could, you know, ever think of is in Capitol Hill. That is the eclectic mix of Capitol Hill. But that's in the one section, right? Capitol Hill is a much bigger city, or excuse me, a much bigger neighborhood than just that. So some people, you know, oh gosh, what am I gonna, you know, have concerns or whatever. And cool story, that's fine. When you look at at the downtown, this core section of Capitol Hill, Pike and Pine, um, you know, what is it, Bellevue, you know, these, these cross sections of Pike and Pine. If you go a little bit further north, if you look on the map towards Roanoke Park and the, and the Roanoke, uh, 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 Roanoke Park Place Tavern, further north up 10th, you know, it's a much different vibe up there than it is, you know, south of Volunteer Park and in, in downtown, or excuse me, in Capitol Hill, you know, proper near Numos and the, you know, all the different uh, venues and stuff. And so Capitol Hill has like a walk score of, let me get it right, of 93, best of the best for Seattle, a walk score of 93. It's got the light rail, it's got the transit, it makes it really convenient and easy. It's got grocery stores, bars, shops, restaurants, um, cutest little coffee shops you ever seen, little sandwich shops, great, great nightlife there. And that, and, and a ton of parks. You've got the, yeah, exactly, parks. You've got 
Um, you know, probably most notable is Volunteer Park. You got the conservatory. You've got all this different stuff up there. Little pocket parks as well. So uh, really convenient, really easy uh, to get around and everything you can think of there. Now that comes at the price of density, right? So like I was talking about moving up 10th, a little bit bigger houses, a little bit more lots, right? You work your way down south of Volunteer Park, you know, a lot of old 1930s apartment buildings, some newer ones, and then townhouses and, and, and smaller. So you just gotta kind of balance that out for what you're looking for in your life. But even if you live north, uh, further north up towards Portage Bay, in Capitol Hill, uh, up by Roanoke and all this stuff, like you're still gonna have very convenient and easy access to transit and it's still gonna be very walkable. Reach out to us, give us a call. We're helping people make this move all the time. We've got your back when, when, when moving here and we wanna do a really good job for you. So I've been setting up a lot of brainstorming sessions with folks to help get them pointed in the right direction. You know, if you come out, we'll take a look at some stuff. We'll get you set up for success. All our contact info's down below. So make it really easy and convenient. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, tap the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Talk to you.